already. Let's do this here. Oh, are you actually pooping as we do this? Oh my gosh. Uh, this is not how I wanted to start this vlog off. <laughs> Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Pudge the other vlog dog. Pudge is paralyzed in the back legs after having suffered a slip disc. Okay, so the verdict in the ASAP Rocky case is out, and it illustrates something that I've talked about in previous vlogs and live streams. A judge is either blessed or cursed in that they literally get to establish reality. Oftentimes when people get stuck in litigation, they say, I can't wait to go in front of a judge because a judge is going to get to the truth. And I say in law, there are always three sides to the story. One person's side, the other person's side, and the truth. That's not true. In law, there are four truths. There is one person's truth, the other person's truth, the actual truth, and the legal truth that a judge establishes after having heard all of the evidence and rendering their decision. A judge does not necessarily render a decision that is the truth. A judge renders a decision that is the legal truth. As of the time a judge puts paper to pen, no, pen to paper, they establish what the truth is. And it may not actually be right, but their right, their duty, and their function is to establish what they think the truth is. Even if they get it wrong, that is the juridical truth. ASAP Rocky, for those of you who don't know, was in Sweden for a show or something, got into some sort of brawl with him and two other associates, and somebody who was apparently following them, harassing them on the streets, etc., etc. A brawl ensues. ASAP Rocky is arrested and detained for over a month. I think it might have been upwards of... Oh, hey. Oh, oh that's my dad. <laughs> How's it going? My dad, she's, she's, she's ducked out of the frame. <laughs> So ASAP Rocky is detained for a month, maybe two months in pretrial detention. I did a vlog on this a couple of weeks ago explaining why there was such a sort of public outrage about this system in Sweden that most people didn't know of, that in Sweden they actually don't have a bail system. So if you were accused of certain types of crimes, particularly violent crimes, if you're deemed to be a flight risk or under certain conditions, you could be held in pretrial detention, which basically means that you're going to sit in a cell until such time that you have your trial and you are determined to be guilty or innocent. If you are found to be guilty, then whatever time you served in pretrial detention will be sort of added or counted towards whatever sentence you receive. If you're found innocent, so ASAP Rocky was held in pretrial detention for over a month, and I think it might have been actually close to two months. He stood trial, and he was released back to the United States pending a written verdict, which many people took to mean that he was going to be found innocent of assault, or at the very least not required to serve any more prison time in the event that he were found guilty. And the other day, the verdict came out, and ASAP Rocky was in fact found guilty of assault and given a conditional sentence. A conditional sentence is basically under certain circumstances like house arrest, but it's basically a sentence which means that you're not going to serve any more additional time but there are certain conditions to your sentence. And if you breach those conditions, you may have to go back to jail. ASAP Rocky's conditions were that he not commit any crimes for the next two years, but we'll get into reading the verdict in a second. All that I want to illustrate is the following. The verdict came out, ASAP Rocky was found guilty of assault, and the judge came to the conclusion that the force used by ASAP Rocky and his two other associates was not justified under the circumstances. It was not legitimate self-defense in that the three people who were convicted of assault could have otherwise avoided the situation and they did not need to escalate to that level of violence in order to defend themselves. Agree... Who's that? Agree or disagree with that decision. That is now a legal reality. It may not be real reality, but it is legal reality because a judge has put paper to pen and established what the legal reality is in the ASAP Rocky case. And that's something that people don't necessarily appreciate. Agree or disagree, right or wrong, actual reality or not, that is now the legal reality. ASAP Rocky is guilty of assault. It was not legitimate self-defense. It was excessive force under the circumstances, etc., etc. But let's go ahead and read the verdict so that we can actually see what the legal reality is in the eyes of the judge. All three defendants are convicted of assault and sentenced to conditional sentences. The court finds that the defendants were not in a situation where they were entitled to self-defense and that they have assaulted the victim by hitting and kicking him. However, it has not been proven that the defendants struck the victim in the head with a bottle or assaulted him with whole or broken bottles. The victim is awarded damages for violation of his integrity and pain and suffering, but less than he requested. The defendants shall, each based on their financial ability, repay the state for its expenses for public legal counsels. The defendants have claimed that they acted in self-defense based on statements from two witnesses 
says the court finds that the defendants were not subject to a current or imminent criminal attack. Therefore, they were not in a situation where they were entitled to use violence and self-defense, nor could they have perceived themselves to be in such a situation. The court finds that it has been proven that the defendants assaulted the victim by hitting and kicking him as he lay on the ground. The artist has also thrown the victim to the ground and stepped on his arm. It has been proven that the artist acted jointly and in collusion with the other two defendants. Therefore, he is only convicted for his own actions. The other two, however, have acted jointly and in collusion. All right, then there's some other stuff and you can freeze frame and read it for yourself, but I just want to get to one last paragraph at the end of the verdict. In regards to sentencing, the court finds that there are both aggravating and extenuating circumstances. In an overall assessment, the court finds that the assault has not been of such a serious nature that a prison sentence must be chosen. The defendants are therefore sentenced to conditional sentences. The legal reality, there were aggravating and attenuating circumstances all at the same time. So ASAP Rocky doesn't need to go back to jail. He's got a conditional sentence. He had to pay the defendant something like the equivalent of 1300 US dollars for pain and suffering and whatever. And ASAP Rocky has to repay the state for the legal expenses and the public prosecution expenses, something along those lines, whatever. But that is the ASAP Rocky situation. That's the law side of it. Now come back to America and let's get into the media side of it because a number of news outlets were reporting that the Trump administration is angry with ASAP Rocky because he didn't thank them for having intervened and gotten ASAP Rocky out of jail, etc., etc. Whatever, not getting into it, it is all gossip. And like we say, gossip is like feathers in a pillow. Once the pillow opens and the gossip feathers get out, you can never put them back in the pillow. It's irrelevant. One thing I did find interesting about it is assume ASAP Rocky didn't thank the Trump administration for their intervention, which ostensibly led to his release at the very least early and probably got him some preferential treatment. When the president of the most powerful nation on earth starts putting a little pressure on another country to you know, maybe release a high profile public celebrity who's been held for over a month in prison before even standing trial and apparently in solitary confinement according to some reports, whatever. Assume that that might have had some influence on ASAP Rockies being released and not having to go back to jail. Oh my gosh, I mean, there's ants all over me. All right, assume he didn't thank Trump. There's something very interesting. If you happen not to like the person who did something nice for you and you can't bring yourself to say thank you to them, that's almost even more joyful for the person who did the good deed because they know that not only are you in fact thankful because objectively anybody would be thankful for having gotten out of jail, they know that not only are you thankful but you can't bring yourself to say thank you, which is even like for someone who would take some sort of joy in that would bring them even more joy than a thank you. It's like you're too embarrassed to say thank you and therefore that brings more joy to the person, whatever. Anyways, it's all gossip, it's all irrelevant. Relevant. The gossip side is just for the media and it's a testament to where the media is, but the law side is the law side and now you know the vlog and if you like this video and you like my content, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell and now you know your vlog. Booyah. Peace out. Boom.